Thanks for staying with us now. If you're just tuning in, we're discussing eradicating poverty in Nigeria. And I think I'm having a headache. <laughs> 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 so please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa mm. or at Wish Africa One with the hashtag Wish mm. Show. Or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-8038-4663. And we still have our guest with us. Femi, if you're, if you're, if you're there, I just want to know. Um, yes, yeah, so we have made a statement with this protest because I want, to, I want to bring it back to the current realities of what's going on right now on the streets. We made a statement with this protest. What would you think um, the young people should start to do, you know? Because I think that we're, we're not, we don't have a structure yet, right? So what are, the, what are the things that we need to put in place? You know why? Because I see the same strategy. Somebody is in need, we gather money, we pull funds, and we give the person, you understand? We solve that problem, that one problem. But that is not a collective way to eradicate poverty. Poverty is, I mean, can be eradicated if, for instance, we fix the educational sector. We know that, okay, everybody's going, you know, there's free health care, there's good education. Those are the kind of things for me that I would rather see, you know, than just one thing trying to solve one problem, like one, one like that. So if you, if you were going to give us an advice, like if we we're going to bring a blueprint, a working document to the, to the government as the Nigerian youth to say, this is, these are our demands, what do you think that blueprint should look like? What are the areas sh we should be focusing on? Right. So, um, hmm. big ones. I think that, um, one of them would be, it sounds crazy, but the foil for the middle class is always the mortgage industry. Mm -hmm. It's always the ability to own assets, um, uh, to own assets, whether the asset is a room or whether the asset is a house, because the asset creates leverage that you can use to move up the social ladder. Mm -hmm. And so the mortgage industry needs to really be visited. Mm -hmm. um, it, for some reason, it hasn't got going because the cost of borrowing is so high and the process is so difficult. We've got to look at that. We've got to look at that. We've got to look at the whole of the land, the whole of the registration of titles. If I have a, a, a lease on a building for five years, how can I monetize that? How can I get that registered and, 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 and release equity in, you know, release mon money into my life? So we've got to look at, at, at the whole mortgage industry as, as a means. We've got to look at the way we lend. We've got to look at, um, the way in which we, we need to start doing some cash flow based lending as opposed to collateral based lending mm -hmm. whereby everybody's asked to go and bring their father's land um so we need to start moving in those kind of areas and creating some fluidity some circuit breakers whereby people can see a pathway to improving their um circumstances so for me the mortgage industry you know um release dead assets difficult to register your property, make it easier, make it smoother, so that people can actually begin to monetize what they own. That's going to release massive amounts of money into the, um, into the, into the economy. Then, of course, strictly, I, I think that you have to do a few direct cash transfers. There's nothing wrong with giving people money. You know, see, if we take a million, a, a million dollars, out of that sovereign fund or whatever it is. It sounds very crazy. If we change it into Naira, assuming that gives us 400 and something million, we could literally look at the BVNs, look at the, the closing cash positions of Nigerians and the poorest Nigerians, and we could direct it to them directly into their account, all right, directly into their account and do those cash infusions in a very transparent way, in, in a way that's, that's easy to estimate, in a way that it makes it clear that this is not a political um, gimmick. It's not about getting supporters from my party. This is something that you're getting. You're getting a letter, you're getting a text from the federal um, government of Nigeria. Your accounts will be created by this amount. You know, and, and these people are not going to use that money to go and buy um, Gucci shoes or to go to buy a house in Dubai. The money is very small. It's going to be used to buy Gary. It's going to be used to buy, um, um, to pay their rent, which is going to energize the base of the pyramid. Once you energize the base of the pyramid, the poorest of the poor, you start to get the multiplier effects as they move upward. So we're doing cash transfer now, but it's still too small. It's too uncertain. It's not, the process is not clear, and it needs to be far more direct. If we have BVN, we can do it. OK. Uti, where is Uti? <laughs> she lost interest. I was here. I was just going to ask a question, but I wasn't okay, sure if ahead. you can hear me. 
So, I mean, I, I like what, what Femi just said because, um, and I have a question on, uh, based on that. Now, I read a story earlier today that talks about a groundnut seller at the Lekki Toll who money has been raised two yeah. million or, or thereabouts. 2.5. Um, so we do have a culture of charity. We have a culture yeah. of giving in that unstructured manner. Now, is this in itself fueling a problem? Because my question is, my first question was, so this lady has been selling groundnuts and she's now been given two point something million naira. I don't know her story. So I don't know if that's ever been the kind of money she's encountered in her life. Yeah. yeah. So now that you've given her these funds, that, yeah. how are you really empowering her? So it, it's almost like mm -hmm. saying, you know, the, the, the narrative of teach a man to fish or-, or, or Yeah, something. yeah, give them a food, yeah, true. This culture that we have of giving, I feel that that is part of our problem because it has now bred this sort of sense of entitlement. It's, it's opened up, and, and that was what I was sort of trying to ask you before, um, I was about the identity of the Nigerian. Mm -hmm. Now, we talk about Nigerians being hardworking people. I absolutely mm -hmm. agree. Um, we're very resilient people. We're very agile people. But there's also the, some truths that we must tell ourselves. Because I feel that in terms of the Nigerian identity, we don't really have one. But one thing that resonates across board for Nigerians is money. Mm -hmm. And that in itself is a problem. So when we talk about just doling out money, because, I mean, look at the UK with its welfare system. It doesn't always work. What it does is it, it breeds laziness. Entitlement. It breeds things that we're, you mm -hmm. know, people are being accused of. Mm -hmm. So I, I sort of feel like, can we not use that money in ways where we've seen it happen before in terms of, it doesn't take a lot in Nigeria because we're so resilient and we're so adaptive to turn it around. And this is, you know, when I talked about, you know, Nigerians returning home, the economy boomed. It wasn't necessarily me handing you money. It was just creating an enabling environment. So I'd just like you to maybe touch on that a little bit. Yeah, you, you, you've made a lot of really big points. And there's no doubt that a social system can be abused. Um, however, the example of the Nordic countries, which is Norway, um, you know, Finland, Sweden, um, you know, those, those Nordic countries, is that they have been able to do this sort of um, cash transfer effectively because the, what the money is, is more like a safety net uh, as opposed to a woman just collecting two, two million you know, two point something million or somebody selling bread just suddenly becoming a celebrity overnight. Um, that, that's randomness. And that degree of randomness, as you've said, has built in this concept of luck that somehow one day I will just hammer. It will just happen. Money will just come from somewhere. You know, I'm praying, you know, I've put oil on my head. I'm going to fast. Someday the money will just happen. So there's this element of randomness. My own will come. My own will come that you see on social media. Um, so we don't have a concept of building we don't have a concept of creating value, of creating value. We want, want to hammer, we want to get there quickly. These are problems with, with the Nigerian identity. And these are signs, mm -hmm. these are almost the sort of things you expect, you know, in the days of slavery, where the slave doesn't think long term. He thinks of how to live now, enjoy mm -hmm. life now, because he might die tomorrow. Mm -hmm. these, these are the parts of identity, I think, that need um, to change. Um, but the money that we're talking about in terms of um, cash are pretty small, they're more existential. But I think that there is something really fundamental about the Nigerian identity. And that's why I keep going back to the beginning. The Nigerian is hardworking, yes. Mm -hmm. But if you look at it, he struggles to create. He, he may have shortcuts. If you want to get somebody to tile your house, to do the tiling for your house, you're probably going to invite somebody from Benin Republic. Um, if you want a good tailor, you're going to look for somebody maybe from Senegal. And so this degree of imprecision, because we're chasing the money, is part of the problems that we have. We don't take enough pride in good work. We don't take enough pride in good work. We don't take enough pride. But these, these are changing, but it's just slow. Uh, we're seeing the changing. Companies are coming up, young companies, new companies that are very, very sold into quality. Um, so there are changes, but it's going to be, like, like you said, a long road, a long road. What the government can do is to facilitate that process, mm -hmm. to encourage that process along. We're not saying, you know, help us, just make that process easier, make it easy for people to create, for people to, um, to, to create value, for people to export their stuff, for people to bring in raw materials. Just make the whole value chain easier for people Absolutely. to succeed. Okay, so I think my question is 
Is it really a question? I think it goes back to the question you asked um, earlier, Mr. Femi, talking about if they have the interest in actually creating the, the, the change that we need. And I think that's actually what's, okay, we speak, speak about how the, the, the protest happening now is not just about end SARS, it's way beyond that. Now we are seeing something come up, the Youth Democratic Party. People are actually putting in, talking about raising funds, preparing for 2020, 2023, um, and elections and all of that. What do you think? Do you think um, we should still rely on this government to start the change that we need? Or do you really think they're really like a decibel about it and they really care less? Because if you fact, ask me... To, thank you already for bringing that because, up. Because Go you ahead. ask me, their response so far... Fine, we saw um, the vice president apologize mm -hmm. and all of that. A lot of people... like, are you? Do we have to protest for you to know that, okay, things are actually not going properly? That is my take. And then... Also, do you really think, do you think we should wait for that? Because I had someone call me um, a few days ago asking me about what can we actually demand um, the president to, <laughs> to step down. Resign. Do, exactly. To, to, can we actually demand that? Can mm -hmm. we actually request for an impeachment and all of that? Will, will it be seen as, um, as um, we going against um, 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 the government? Will it be, will it be seen as... Um, I can't remember the word right now, but yeah. So what do you think? Should we still rely? Should we still have hope and faith in this government? Or do you think we should honestly just lock up and just plan <laughs> strategically towards the 2023 elections? I, 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 um, I, I, you know, it's really a paradox because I really do understand where the president is coming from. I, I said that before. Um, in his generation, it was infrastructure. Um, and, and that's what he's doing now. That's what he's trying to do. Um, however, he's dealing with a very complex um, set of circumstances that makes that value chain very difficult to develop. Um, if, they, if, if you have a youth party or whatever it is, it'll, be a, it'll never win the presidential elections, but it will be, um, because it's so expensive to win that, yeah. it, it would be a pressure group, a huge pressure group that can actually force change mm -hmm. in the manifesto of, of, of these um, these parties. Absolutely. Um, Nigeria does also need a degree of stability right now because, um, you know, if if it if it goes south, if it goes south, you know, I tell you, like my Ekiti people will be thinking of how they're going to carve out their own own empire. The Oyo people will be thinking of doing their own. Um, you know, and it, it it could get very messy. Mm. So we do need some order. But what is happening? What the problem is is that. The, the, the ruling elites do not understand the speed at which the rest of the world is moving. Mm -hmm. They do not understand, they cannot grasp the way in which the world is in a competitive position. Absolutely. We are losing our best again. The same way we, lose the, we lost them to slave trade, we are mm -hmm. losing them to Canada. We're losing yes. them to the green card programs. Yes. We're losing them to second passports. Mm -hmm. We are losing our best again. And so what they need to get with the program and understand that the world does not move in cycles of five years. It moves in seconds and minutes. Mm -hmm. And that every um, country is in competition with others. Mm -hmm. The Ghanaians have tried so hard to engage diaspora to, to sell the story of how, you know, the slaves, you know, were taken away, can come back and reconnect with Mother Africa. And they're doing that. And I know that there's some, some major investments. But what people don't know is we had more slaves leaving Badagri and Old Calabar mm -hmm. and Creek Town mm -hmm. than any other part of West Africa. Mm -hmm. We have 20% of the Blacks, I think, in, in America come from here. But we are not selling that narrative. We're not... We're not, we are acting like big men. There is something that the Singapore, the, the, the Singapore founders said. He said, you know, we said when we come together in the Commonwealth meetings, you see all the big countries coming with their jets. He said, then you also see the countries like Nigeria and Kenya, which were quite you know, wealthy then, coming with their jets. Whereas they should have been walking there and telling people we need help. Mm. They should have been coming by ship and being in the hold and I say we need help. And so this, the concept of bigness, the contest, the idea that Nigeria is too big to fail, the, con the idea of complacency in the international market has to change. Absolutely. We're in competition with everybody. Absolutely. And we have to move I, I want to go back to the, the tweet, I'm sorry, the quote I said that um, in a country where, in a country well-governed, poverty is something to be ashamed of. That's the country that is well-governed. 
But in a country badly governed, wealth is something to be ashamed of. What you just said now. You should be ashamed to display, to wealth, display wealth in a country yeah. like Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Because the, the, the general yeah. populace, they are living in poverty. So it is a thing of shame yeah. that we have people buying Lamborghinis, people and buying Ferraris in this country. When yeah. we have so many poor people in this country. But let me take some few comments. Uti, I think you have one with you. Maybe you take yours first quickly. Yes. So... So it says, good evening, our country Nigeria will be great when we start doing things one step before another. Our leaders should learn economics, scale of preferences, do the most needed infrastructures and make citizens happy. And this is from Ade. Totally, totally agree. Absolutely. You must crawl before you walk, before you run, before you fly. Okay, so um, I'm going to take Angela, then um, Onesa will take the last one. Angela says that eradicating poverty requires a change in style of governance that supports wealth creation. Then, sorry, Gide says one last one, Nigeria can have a gradual approach to having a deliberate strategy to lifting people from poverty. Mm. That's from GD, and I totally agree with GD. Go ahead. No, definitely. So I have here from Chisom, the one I, I read well, earlier. Was it Chisom or Eunice? I think you so have. So I have Eunice. Yeah. Okay, so it says hashtag ways. This has to be a process, but we need to build social capital called trust. I okay. totally, totally agree with I that. I think we, 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 we totally agree with that. But um, Femi, if you had one thing to say right now to the government, what would that be? And if you had another thing again to say to us young people in Nigeria, the youth, what would that be? So we can wrap up on that. Talk okay. to the people. Okay. You have to talk to them. The tweets are good, but they're not good enough. Not mm -hmm. in this climate. Mm -hmm. We need to see our leaders on television, we need to see them on the web and we need to get them talking to people mm -hmm. and we need them to begin to talk to people in the terms that in the terms of people who serve us rather than people who are in charge of us mm -hmm. that is the beginning of the trust of building of healing the trust deficit mm -hmm. we need the, because we need we need to trust the government in order to move this forward Absolutely. and as that caller said there's a massive trust gap and mm -hmm. it starts with just talk Absolutely. and don't talk from the top talk to people as if you serve us. Absolutely. I think we can wrap it up there. Thank you so much, Femi Akande, for joining you. us. It's always a pleasure <laughs> when Thank we you. have you on the show. Thank you so much. So, ladies, um, because we, we ran, off, out of, ran out of time, we really cannot give like a summary. But, Uti, in one minute, what would you say? One second, rather. One second. One word. Mm -hmm. What would you say? One second. Um, Nigeria, let's not keep doing the same thing we do over and over again. We trade frying pan for fire. The question that was just asked about the Youth Democratic Party, your generation does not guarantee your success. Mm. Let us fight for the right people with the, to, to get the kind of change that we want. Absolutely. So it's not just about being the Youth Democratic Party. And that Uti, that one second, one okay, second. Okay, that, but then again, I'm all for the Youth Democratic Party. I say Youth Democratic Party 2023. I believe if we continue with this momentum, I believe You're doing strongly, that we strongly. Do. And I also do not agree with Mr. 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 Femi says we cannot win it. I strongly do not. No, we might not win presidential. We but when we whip it up from the from grassroots, the grassroots. From, yes, from the local, yes. And believe me, I am totally, I believe in possibilities. So I believe even presidential is possible. Okay. I believe it. Totally. So, totally. I think that's a, that's a wrap, late, um, guys. Everyone, thank you so much for watching. Please watch a repeat broadcast of this episode at 3 p.m. It's been a very insightful conversation this evening. And keep all the conversations going on all our social media platforms at Waste Your Africa One and at Cross TV Africa as we continue to hear what you are saying. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. Poverty is the parent of revolution and crime. And we'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy your evening.